What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today we're talking about the Tesla Super Bottle, which is a tiny little Easter egg hidden within the Model 3, which controls the entire cooling of the automobile. And although this sounds nerdy and like a crazy little feature of the car, it's really a microcosm of Tesla's vertically integrated technology-first approach to building an electric vehicle and shows just basically how much of a structural advantage they have over every other auto company. So I was just watching uh, my buddy Sean Mitchell's latest video with Sandy Monroe um, and Mark Ellis from Monroe and Associates, which is this firm based out of Detroit. They're like the leading independent third-party consulting firm for automotive companies, aerospace companies, defense companies. Their whole business is tearing apart cars and then selling reports back to other car companies about what parts were in it, how it worked, how much it cost, all of that stuff. And so I was actually just in Detroit um, about a couple months ago with Sean Mitchell, with Sandy Monroe. We were visiting. We went to the EV conference they had where they broke down, you know, the Model 3, the I-Pace, uh, the Chevy Bolt, and we got to learn a ton about it. And so Sean has this new interview out with uh, Sandy Monroe, and there's so many amazing insights in here. And one of them that really piqued my interest uh, was when they start talking about the Super Bottle. And this is an episode I've had on the back burner for a while. And so I kind of want to just do a little bit of a deep dive inspired by Sean Mitchell's video. You, should, you guys should totally watch. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but I just wanted to break down what this super bottle is, why it's so revolutionary, and then at the end of the video, why it may not just be a part in the Model 3 forever, and it could turn into a massive new business line for Tesla. Anyway, it's going to be so exciting. So, I mean, the, the super bottle is a great example yeah. of how um, how the normal automotive companies don't work together, and Tesla does. Yeah. So that super bottle crosses many uh, lines that uh, that. You can't cross here. I mean, if I'm in charge of engine cooling or battery cooling, I don't want your. Yeah, I don't want nothing to do with uh, cooling the cabin and and so, and and yet we've got the motor cooling, the battery cooling, and electronics, and electronics, and the uh, and all all going through one little bottle that's got some clever little um, uh, ball valves that uh, that open and close to make sure that everything's getting heated or everything's being cooled. To where it needs to be that's really i mean so i'm taking something that i got a i would have a pile like this of bits and pieces and they've got this super bottle that's i mean i i we all thought yeah. that was the best thing in the whole damn car yeah because and and then there's the pride aspect it's got a little bottle in it it looks like superman with little wings and stuff like that that doesn't happen. You're not allowed to do that shit ever. <laughs> and you to start out, l let's talk about what this is. And Jalopnik um, wrote an amazing article about this. The best article online, if you want to learn about the super bottle, is written by David Tracy. Came out in December 2018. Uh, it's called the, the Tesla Model 3 Super Bottle Easter Egg. is a fascinating packaging solution. So I actually was in contact with David Tracy, and he said I could use images from this. So huge shout out to Jalopnik. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. But they basically explain how this super bottle works. So at its core, it is a central cooling system that basically manages the airflow of across every single part of the car. So what's so different about this is traditional automakers have a hodgepodge of a bunch of different cooling systems. For instance, if we go to this Monroe presentation uh, that shows a diagram of the cooling system of the Tesla Model 3 versus the Chevy Bolt, you can see the Model 3 on the left there has this arc of cables all going from that one centralized CR pack at the bottom, which is the super bottle. But the Chevy Bolt, as you can see, to cool the battery pack has a whole different system. To cool the cabin heat has a whole different system. To cool the electronics has an entirely different coolant system. So what does this mean? You're buying, you know, three times the amount of pumps, three times the amount of heaters, three times the amount of coolant bottles. The complexity of the design is so much more. The cost of the design is so much more. Not to mention that Chevy and, and you know, the competitors are buying all of these cooling system parts off the shelf from a third party supplier where Tesla is building theirs in house. So there's tremendous layers and layers of advantages here from Tesla's system. And it goes way deeper than that. There's actually another video by Jalopnik, which explains the airflow, how this cooling system that goes within the battery pack, as you can see from this design, there's all those lines running through the core of the battery pack. Well, what that is, is Tesla's battery pack. If it, you know, this is it standing down. If I laid it like sideways, you would see all these rows of cylinders, um, like the little tube cells. And in between those rows is a little tiny little like 
uh, square pockets of airflow where air can flow through to cool the battery exactly as it is high speed charging. So this is a huge difference from the other cooling packs that are designed outside of the battery pack that can't cool as fast. So that may be a reason why Tesla is able to charge so much faster because of this innovating cooling design. So that's just one kind of tangent example about, you know, how this different cooling system can actually impact the consumer experience. You know, having this one central super pump system that was designed from scratch to integrate everything that's going on in the car is a huge advantage. And in the Jalopnik article, they sum up Monroe's points about what exact, you know, what type of exact advantages this could lead to. They say increased modularity in packaging space due to the integration of pumps, actuators with valves with the and valves with the housing. Components generally have space protection requirements. Separating them could inflate those requirements depending on layout. Potential for increased serviceability as functional aspects of the cooling system on collocated. Potential weight savings associated with portions of those components housing being integrated with the super bottle. Potential weight savings associated with lack of separate pumps mounting brackets. Reduced final assembly costs as that likely comes in as a complete module. Reduced final assembly time and labor due to component integration and use of quick disconnects is an assembly process enabler. So that's a lot of fancy terms for saying this is much easier to install. It's easier to service. It takes less time to install. It's less complicated to install. So that means you can build it faster for cheaper and get you a better product. So what does that mean? Tesla is building a better consumer product with a better cooling system for cheaper because they have done it vertically integrated in-house. And so taking a step back, this is why I wanted to make this episode and why it's such an important, the, the super bottle is so dope. Oh, I forgot to mention the coolest part about the super bottle, which is that it has like this superhero on it, like this little design. It's like an Easter egg. He's like this little super bottle guy with the Tesla logo, which is just, I love the like character and like pizzazz that Tesla puts into its products like that. You know, who would do that? But um, I think it's also a clue about what, how important the super bottle is and why it's a big deal and why it's going to lead to something else big in the future, which I'm going to get to in a sec. But back to them, what does, what does this tell us about the manufacturing of Tesla versus other companies? That's the real insight here. Tesla's vertically integrated approach, they want to do everything in-house, and this means a much more cohesive de design team. Like I said, there's huge compartmentalization we can see in the design of these legacy automobiles, and that's because their organizations are super compartmentalized. The entire mindset of these auto companies is you outsource everything for suppliers. Every single system is a different thing that's outsourced. They're not designing it from this holistic approach. So that entire design manufacturing manufacturing philosophy is leading to these results where you have a hodgepodge of cooling systems that don't really make sense when you take a step back, but they only make sense when you're looking from the like in internally, you know, bureaucratic, politically, you know, you know, process for how to make decisions at these huge companies. And so this is a huge, huge advantage for Tesla. And this is not just playing out in the super bottle. This is playing out in tons of different facets of Tesla's cars that are making it such a better technology. You know, there's a reason Tesla's cars charge way faster than any anybody else's electric vehicles that are out on the road right now. There's a reason why Tesla's cars have the longest range of any EV out on the road right now. It's because of these little things they're doing with their technology because they're vertically integrating. And this is why I always say like legacy automakers are not a threat to Tesla. People starting from scratch like Rivian are who want to design EVs. They want to be vertically integrated. They're actually thinking about the future of the car versus just, you know, outsourcing everything and actually no having no like technology skills or IP really in-house. You're buying commoditized off-the-shelf products, paying a markup for them. You know, I think it's just a backwards way to compete. And that's why I think Tesla is so, so far ahead. And even beyond that, the reason why Tesla has innovated on this cooling system is because you don't really need to have an amazing cooling system if you don't have a huge battery pack and you don't have a huge computer that's running your autonomous neural net. So that's the other reason why legacy automakers have put no effort into their cooling systems because they're not that focused on batteries or EVs. It's not their core competency. And they're doing nothing in terms of building chips and basically a huge computer on board to get ready for self-driving. Tesla's doing both of those things. And that's why they had to innovate to get the super bottle to be able to build, you know, a robust enough cooling system to handle all of that. And that's where this rubber meets the road moment. It's going to happen to all these other automakers. They, you know, what are they going to do? Stack two more cooling systems on for the new computer and the bigger battery that are coming on board? Like, it's only going to get more and more complicated, more and more fragmented. It's even more of a reason for them to start from scratch and try and copy what Tesla's doing with a single cooling system. So even beyond where it is today, when you think about where the vehicle is headed, cooling is going to become an even more important component as we go forward towards an autonomous and electric future. And Tesla's at Way ahead of the curve there. So the last part of this episode, which I think is so, so fascinating, I made a moonshot money about this, is the Tesla AC or HVAC system. There's a patented HVAC system in the Model 3, which apparently is run and all relies on this super bottle technology. And 
when Elon Musk was on the Joe Rogan podcast, they mentioned they were talking about the consumption of air conditioning, you know, heating and cooling buildings. And they asked if Tesla was working on an AC product. And Elon Musk had this crazy smile and like hinted at it, but didn't hint at it. And basically said he couldn't comment on future product announcements. They moved on. But I made a whole moonshot Monday about this makes huge sense. Tesla already has this core competency. They patented this HVAC system, you know. And, and then when I was researching the super bottle today, I had like this aha moment where I was like, wait, like, the super bottle is managing from a central location the two, essentially cooling different parts of the car all at once harmoniously in balance from this one central hub imagine if you had a central hub but instead of cooling parts of the car you were co cooling rooms in a house or rooms in a building it's such a similar like design principle and philosophy and the product is already there it's just running the cold air to different you know compartments of the car and in the car but I think this exact same technology and the super bottle itself could be the backbone of Tesla's smart home AC system in the future. And that's why, you know, I was so excited to make an episode about it and dive deep into it because I think on one hand, it's just a cool little widget that Tesla's doing that's going to make their cars better and cheaper and, you know, more efficient than the competition. But on the other hand, it could be a sneak preview into a massive business and the future of Tesla, which is if we're going get, to get our energy use under wraps, we have to be more efficient with how we, you know, heat and cool our homes, get better at that. And if you're already producing energy, you know, I think getting into that ways we consume energy business, which is mainly heating and cooling, is an, a, a logical adjacent vertical for Tesla to get into. And so I think in the long run, when you think about the smart house, they want to get panels on your roof. They want to get the battery in your garage. I think they're also going to want to put a super bottle in your central AC, AC system and use that to heat and cool your home too. Just sort of a moonshot idea at the end. But anyway, this wraps up my super bottle episode. Huge shout out to Jalopnik for letting me use the images and for Sean Mitchell for doing that amazing interview. Um, also, if you want more deep dives, sort of like tech, random quirky model three fun fact videos like this i have a couple more in mind so comment below and, and i'll make them if you want them this is hyper change huge shout out to our patreon supporters producers fun in the channel making this all possible thank you so much i'll see y'all next time peace